let's talk about The Ruins. This is directed by Carter Smith and written by Scott B. Smith based on a novel by Scott Smith. So is it the same person? Or is it just a coincidence that the person who wrote this movie has a very similar name, he has the exact same name, Scott Smith, as the guy who wrote the novel? So it's based on a novel by Scott Smith written by Scott B. Smith. Is that the same person? I don't know. It's just kind of funny. And the director is Carter Smith. Are they brothers? Are they related? Uh, the executive producer for this movie is Ben Stiller. I was shocked to see his name. I didn't know Ben Stiller was producing horror movies. Um, so yeah, I was shocked to see that. And this movie tells a story about two couples look for fun during a holiday in Mexico, but they get much more than that after visiting an archaeological dig in the jungle. Carnivores vines try to ensnare the friends in their tendrils, forcing the group to fight for survival. So the things I like about this movie, I really like the cast. You got Sean Ashmore, who I always love him in every movie. He's always the best character. He was in Frozen, and he was in Mother's Day, and of course he did other genres, but every horror movie I see him in, I really like him. You got Jonathan Tucker, who was in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, and he plays like a kind of a dweeb in that movie. He's kind of like the dorky character in that one. And in this one, he is ripped. I was shocked to see how muscular he was. You got some good actresses in here too from other horror movies as well. You got the chick from Neon Demon. I think her name's like Jenna Malone. You got Joe Anderson, who's playing a German guy in this movie, even though he's an English actor. He was in the Crazies remake. And yeah, so got a good cast and the performances across the board are pretty good so no complaints there i thought everybody did a solid job playing their role i like the setting how they're just trapped there i think whenever you ha have a group of characters that are trapped somewhere and it's an isolated setting it always makes for a good horror movie and i think aesthetically this movie's also pretty good looking you know i like the the ruins and just the aesthetic of the film it's very well shot and i like the premise it's basically like jordy verrill because <laughs> When you touch this stuff, it grows on you, and if you have an open wound, it goes inside of you and grows inside your body also. So it's basically got like that creep show segment as the premise of the movie. And there's some really good gore sequences. There's not a lot of it. They use it in the right moments. It's not here to showcase gore. It's more about the thrills, not the blood. But there is plenty of blood here. There's lots of good gore and body horror and just stuff growing inside of people so that's pretty awesome i like that and this movie kills a kid just brutally i like that this movie doesn't waste any time explaining like how or why these things are alive they don't try to dig into the backstory of this place and you know, there's no character that's in here for exposition's sake. Like, here's what happened many years ago and why this is going on and how. We don't need to know that crap. It's just not necessary, so I'm glad they didn't waste any time doing that. Even though it's a isolated setting and they're there basically from like the 20-minute mark on for like an hour there, it never gets stale and boring. You're never wishing they could just get off the damn, you know, ruins. They actually keep the pace fresh and they never like you know just overstay its welcome the dialogue and the character decisions was you know really keeping me interested i was never bored watching this movie if there's one thing i am kind of mixed on i'm not sure how i feel about it it's the fact that these vines can kind of you know talk and mimic sounds it's a little bit more silly than creepy to me but i do like how they utilize that ability in a couple of moments like taunting the victims like mimicking things they said in the past and like you know, bringing stuff back up and making one person think that this person's like cheating on them and stuff like that to kind of create tension and, you know, chaos between the, you know, in the group. But like I said, at the same time, I think it's kind of silly that they're able to just make cell phone noises and it just, it seems like something that might split the audience. <laughs> As for things I didn't really care for in this movie, I think that the opening and the ending is just basic, standard Hollywood horror movie stuff. Like, the opening is not interesting. It's very basic. And the characters, I just don't care about how they're set up. I didn't really, I didn't really care about any of them all that much. 
you know, like they seem like nice people, I guess, but I just wasn't really invested in them as much as I would have wanted to. There's just hardly, there's hardly any focus on the one couple, especially. I know one of them is in, you know, uh, medical school, so they use that, of course, to help out other people when they get hurt. You know, he's the brains, and but I don't know much about Sean Ashmore and his girlfriend. I just know they're together. And then you got the German guy. I just wish there would have been a little bit more character moments in the first act. And I wish there would have been, you know, a better setup to these characters. I wish they were just a little bit more sympathetic instead of making Amy kind of an unlikable moron. I didn't really like her character at all. So final thoughts, I think that this is a pretty good survival horror movie. If you like, you know, trapped, isolated setting horror movies and, you know, just trying to survive the day or survive the week, you know, trying to wait for help to come, those kinds of horror movies. I think this is a really good one to add to your collection. It's got very good performances, a good cast, some good body horror and some gross out moments. There's even a couple of decent jump scares in the movie that actually kind of got me. So I gotta recommend it when it comes to the ruins. Add this one to your collection. Go out and buy it. <coughs> All right, time for a very quick spoiler discussion because there's really not much I need to say about this movie that needs to be spoiled. So I'll just point out stupid stuff. Like at the very end, why would her Jeep, their Jeep, still be there? I think that, I mean, it's been four or five days at this point. It would not be there. And never get in a taxi where the word taxi is written clearly in like black paint, like this guy put it on there himself. He's probably not even a real taxi driver. So do not take a taxi cab that's a truck and it's written in like black paint all right that's some shady shit and we get this dumb dog scare not a fan of that because it's unrealistic too like that dog would have reacted to their presence being there a lot sooner but instead they have time to walk up to the truck knock on the window and then like five seconds later the dog that's just been there the whole time quiet decides oh now i'm gonna start barking to scare the audience the dog would have been barking as soon as they walked up not wait 10 seconds just to pull a stupid jump scare, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's not much else to talk about. You know, we got, see, I could talk about some of the gore effects that are pretty cool. The guy getting his leg amputated, the way that was done, breaking them with the rocks first. And, you know, he says that the guy can't feel it, but he's screaming. Is he screaming because he knows what's going on? Or can he actually feel it? Whatever. And, you know, the one girl, she loses it, stabs her boyfriend. And the one person who survives this movie at the end is the girl who should have died because she's the one that stepped on the vines, got them kicked up the freaking ruins, and got them in that situation. And she's the one that gets the kid killed because she's the one throwing the fucking plant at the guy. Like, why was she aiming for the kid? And since they found out that's how you can get them to kill each other, why didn't they go, oh shit, well, let's just keep picking up vines and we'll just start throwing them at all of them like that's what they should have done they should have went back on top maybe create some kind of catapult system because they're very good with their hands they're creating all this other shit they should have went up there created some kind of catapult system and start flinging all kinds of you know vines towards them and get them to start shooting each other one by one you know lessen the numbers down there and then they can escape that should have been the movie that would have been hilarious it would have been i guess more of a horror comedy at that point but still, it, that would have been my thinking in that situation when that happened. And I love that they killed that kid instantly. And so, yeah, and that's really about it. I mean, at the very end, we find out that the Greeks are actually coming. If they just would have waited one more day, the Greeks would have arrived. But would that have changed anything? Like, if they would have went up to get them, they wouldn't have been able to come back down with them. There still would have been the people around, so that wouldn't have changed shit. So it, it didn't matter. Yeah, it's a typical open, typical horror movie ending. You know, like, oh, she's infected. How? How is she infected? She never got cut. They established that when you have a wound, that's when you're most vulnerable. Like, sure, they can, you know, grow on your clothes and stuff, and you can get rashy skin, but they're never crawling in your body unless you have a wound for them to enter. Like, the one girl, Stacy, the German guy, and when she cut her boyfriend's hand, he was fucked at that moment. And then, you know, her, the other guy got stabbed and killed, so he got it easy. But the main girl, Amy, she never had a wound, not that I knew of. So she should not have had that thing crawling in her face. Unless it went up her vagina when she was asleep or something. Maybe then, that's how it got in her. But, yeah, so. I mean, there's the cool scene where Stacy, she's, she's lost it. 
and she's cutting herself, and she's like tearing like flaps of flesh off, kind of like a saw six in the open, like just peeling skin off of her like thighs and stuff. Like that was pretty cool. And but yeah, there's not much else to talk about. I'm not gonna try to make this a 30 minute review or anything. Let's not extend this any longer. That's all I gotta say. Um, Hockey Mask War for best character in this movie for me was Eric, played by. Sean Ashmore, and the Hanky Award for Worst character in this movie is Amy, the chick from Neon Demon, who gets them in this shitty situation in the first place, and the Clap Award for Best Scene in this movie will be that awesome, disturbing leg amputation scene, very gruesome, and the Funny Bone Award for Funniest Moment is when Sean Ashmore is like, can you hear me now? And then the joke comes back later on when she's like, what was all that shit about? Can you hear me now? He's like, it was just a fucking joke. So those are my thoughts on The Ruins. Let me know what you thought about this movie in the comments below, and as always, if you like what you've seen here, you can hit this like button, become a Patreon for as little as a dollar a month to request movie reviews like this, and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds, and until next time, Alpha Feeders. <laughs>